Okay, this is probably one of the most, if not the most important lesson. I want to talk about the five honest signals that every attractive guy has. And sometimes they don't even know they're doing it. These five honest signals I discovered after years of studying guys who were naturals, who did this unconsciously. They don't even know they're doing it. And I broke it down to five simple steps that you can use and practice to replicate this aura of attractive dominance that these type of guys have no matter how they look. Some of these guys aren't even good looking at all, but they still get women because of these five honest signals. The first one is subcommunication of dominance. Your subcommunication is the way you say something, and it's influenced by your voice tonality, your eye contact, your nonverbal body language, the tempo and the volume in which you speak, and your micro expressions. And the reason that we want to subcommunicate dominance is because the majority of guys don't have enough dominance. I would say 95%. The 5% of guys who do have enough dominance have the opposite problem. They come across as too aggressive. People are afraid of them. When they stand next to someone, their energy is very, very strong, and it's almost like you want to get away from them. For most of you watching this, if you're in this course, you probably lack that level of subcommunicative dominance. So how do you develop it? So there are a couple of things we do to subcommunicate dominance. The first thing is I slow my eye gaze, right? So instead of darting my eyes around really quickly, I'm slowly gazing at someone. Every like commercial that uses sex to sell a product, you see the slow gaze kind of go like this. They're not like, what's going on? It's like the sexy slow gaze, right? And male models use this too when they do photographs. When they gaze at someone, instead of looking at them directly, I look beyond them, just a little bit beyond. And that's how you get those amazing shots where your eyes look piercing, right? Because you're looking through it, okay? Sometimes when I'm talking to a girl, I'm looking at her, but I'm really looking at the artist behind the painting. And when you have that type of gaze, you subcommunicate dominance. My movements are not like super jerky, like, oh, like really fast. It's like deliberate, slow, you know, controlled movements. Now, if there's an emergency, of course, I'm going to jump off and run. But overall, as I'm, when I'm socializing and talking to people, I'm controlled and deliberate in the way I move. And this takes some practice, but when you combine this with a strong eye contact, it can be really, really powerful. You can also subcommunicate dominance by pausing, really pausing and listening to the girl. You know, it's like, okay, not feeling the need to reply right away. A lot of times you go, oh, hey, I just went to this uh, Ferris wheel ride. And most guys are like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Like, what was it like? Blah, blah, blah. Instead, slow it down. I just went to this Ferris wheel ride. And you're like, that's cool. How was it for you? How did you feel about it? So there's a level of dominance there where I actually listen, I give a small pause before I reply. The other subcommunication you can use is voice inflection. So normally I talk in a neutral voice tone. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. You know, the, way, the same way I talk to a friend. Sometimes I'll have an upward inflection. Hello, officer. How can I help you today, right? When I need to build rapport. In dating, sometimes I'll be talking neutral and sometimes I'll have a downward inflection. So for example, hey, uh, you looked interesting. You know, I wanted to meet you. Right? It's a more commanding tone. And so that voice tone combined with everything we just talked about gives you a level of subcommunicative dominance that she won't always feel with other guys. So I practice all of these variables to subcommunicate a basic level of dominance that builds that sexual tension and attraction. And every guy who's a natural does this on some level. Most Hollywood actors, most male leads, if they're in a romantic movie, they have some level of subcommunicative dominance that makes them attractive, that gives them that mysteriousness, that gives them that unpredictability in that character's arc and the way he reacts to situations in the script. A good example is uh, I had a guy, a friend, she's telling him, oh, I love board game nights. And immediately he's like, oh yeah, that's awesome, me too, right? That's super non-dominant. And instead, when she talks to me, oh, I love board games. I take a pause, I look at her, and I'm like, cool. Well, what kind of board games do you play? And she's like, oh, Monopoly, you know, uh, we play like Solitaire. I'm like, that's not really a board game. I'm talking about like Settlers of Catan, like real board games, Exploding Kittens, Cards Against Humanity. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't know those. Could you teach me? So that's like how you communicate with dominance, right? Taking a pause, looking at her, qualifying giving her a little bit of a low voice inflection. That's not a real board game. These are the real board games. Check this out. So subcommunication of dominance is one of the key first factors for attraction that you, you should master when you learn like the lines that in this course and when you develop your own lines. The second honest signal is what we call frame control of authenticity. Frame control is when you 
frame the conversation in a way that suits a particular uh, agenda. You can frame control things through power and fear. Putin once brought a dog to uh, a meeting with Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, and he knew that she was afraid of dogs because when she was little, she was bit by a dog. So in that situation, he was non-verbally frame controlling you know, fear. A lot of managers, uh, the way they manage teams is through punishment and fear. In dating, what we want to frame control is authenticity. You don't want to control the girl with money, power, etc. because those levels of control never last long and people feel resentment towards it at some point. So I frame control for authenticity. How do I do that? You ever have a conversation with someone and it just feels fake? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, how's the weather today? Oh, pretty good, Bob. Great, so how's your, how's your day, Stacey? Pretty good. How are the kids? Oh, the kids are great. They're going to school. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm turning into Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but my point is, there's a lack of realness there, right? And so when people talk to me, even as, as uh, potential fans, I'm like, hey, man, uh, what brought you out to Vegas? You know, I, uh, what shows are you going to? That's cool. Is your family with you? Are you here by yourself? Like, what are some things you want to do? I bring it down, the fake conversation, I bring it down to a level of realness and authenticity, and I frame control for that. So I ask her questions that actually really, she gives a shit about, right? I'll give an example. Um, when I go to a store, uh, most people are like, hey, how are you? How can I help you today? So right when I walk into a store, when they say that, I'll pause and I'll smile and I'll say, don't mind me, I'm just here to uh, make an impact. I'm gonna walk around. And then that actually gets me into conversations with a lot of store girls. Most guys are like, oh, you're so beautiful. I had to talk to you. I'm like, hey, I really liked uh, how you put your makeup on. Nice job, right? And then I'll walk around and maybe come back to her. So I'm always looking for frame controlling for authenticity. I guide the interaction through to an authentic conversation. I'll tell you a really great story that happened to me recently. I was at a very high-end restaurant and I was with a client slash friend of mine. He's enjoying it. It's a very hard to get into restaurant. He's talking to the guy at the bar and he's like having a little bit of what we call like a little bit fake conversation, right? He's like, oh, does the, a the band come? Like, oh, is your name this? And he was like, no. He's like, oh, wait, last time I was here, I was calling you this name and you didn't tell me. And he's like, no, I would have told you, <laughs> right? So what I observed was a guy who was very congruent and he was frame controlling for authenticity. My friend was making these like, surface level things basically he's talking like he doesn't care about the band you know he doesn't really care he's just trying to make conversation but then the guy at the bar was cool and he listened to him and he was like yeah you know the band does come after 6 30 every day and he paused for a second and he smiled and he calibrated and he's like yeah and if you want to if you like music they play jazz and you know the food is great here so he led my friend who was a little nervous into a real authentic conversation how does that apply to your dating life? Well, if the girl's like, yeah, giving you one word answers, like, yeah, you know, I think this class is good. I don't know. I just started taking it. At some point, I'll be like, you know, I can't tell, I can't read you that well. Like, is this conversation interesting for you or should I leave? It's okay either way, but I, I just want you to have fun, right? So that's what we call like a check-in, a temperature check. Is she having fun? I can't read her. How do I bring her down to like down to earth, right? It's like, instead of talking about things they don't care about, it's like, well, what do you want to talk about? What are some things that interest you? So I always frame control for authenticity and that's how I'm able to direct the conversation into something real. A lot of female models, um, friends of mine that have this problem where guys will talk to her and it's like he's putting up an act, right? And one of the tricks that she taught me, I was like, how do you have all these guy friends? And she's like, well, I start asking about their mom. I start asking about how their family's doing, their siblings. We start talking about their hometown. And these guys, even though she doesn't want to sleep with them or date them, they love her because she actually brought it to a place of authentic conversation. She friend zoned them through authenticity. As a guy, you want to proactively attract a girl through authenticity and lead the conversation in a way where you get to something real that you both care about, okay? And this is one of the most powerful honest signals that you can use. All the lines that you're going to learn in this course, you want to frame it in the context of leading her into authenticity. Frame control for authenticity. Don't force it. Don't impose it on her. Just lead her gently to real conversations. And this applies to how you talk to your mom, how you talk on job interviews, how you talk to your friends, okay? Frame control for authenticity. The third honest signal is a subtext of willingness to walk away. Subtext is something that is not explicitly said, but it is implied 
within the narrative of the conversation. That means that she understands what you're saying without you having to say it. So how do you convey subtext of that you're not a needy guy, that you're willing to walk away? There are two ways to do it. There's a verbal way and there's a non-verbal way. The verbal way is quite simple. If she's like, are you hitting on me? Or like, you're coming on too strong or she's not that interested, I'll say something like, hey, relax. Like, I don't want anything from you. I'm just here to hang out with my friends. I liked your style, you had a good energy field, and I just wanted to say hello, that's all. It's not a big deal. Look, you're welcome to leave anytime you want. I'm just happy to be here, right? So at some point in the conversation, I'll throw in like, hey, you can leave whenever you want. Anyway, as I was saying, so you're giving her the verbal option to, for her to walk away, but just by not walking away, she's, like, she's implicitly saying she's willing to stay. There's a great uh, line from a friend of mine who's kind of a, who was kind of a player in Miami. He will talk to girls, he'll flirt with them and say, okay, you ladies, you do what you want and I will do my best and we'll see what happens, right? And the girls just start laughing because they know it's true. Um, when the conversation is going okay but not great, I'll say something like, you know, it's great to meet you, have a great night. And then as I'm leaving, I'm like, you know, one last question before I go and I just throw out another question. The subtext of, of willingness to walk away really can be done non-verbally too, right? So as I'm talking to a girl, I'll be looking at my phone, not, not on purpose, but just checking. I'm sorry, my friend is uh, texting me. He's on his way here, just giving you a heads up. Um, you can do a takeaway. As I'm moving away, my physical body will move away, and I'll be like, yeah, well, there's something about you that's prompting me to stay. So I'll combine that with a verbal willingness to walk away, which kind of looks like this. Well, I'm here, Becky, to meet my friends. They all came out for uh, one of my good friend's birthday party. But, you know, there was something about you that I liked, which is your style. How long did it take you to get ready today? Okay, that's one way. Or like, yeah, I'm here to meet my friends. And uh, actually, before I go, I had one last question for you. Do you prefer tea or coffee? Now, if I'm doing a physical takeaway, right, it's not like I'm, I'm going to leave. It's more like I'm thinking about leaving, but maybe I'll stay. But if you're doing this and she's like, just immediately turns back to her friends, that means that you didn't have enough rapport in the first place. So if you do a slow takeaway, it's an honest signal, right? That's testing her connection to you. If you do a slow takeaway and you come back and she's already gone, that connection wasn't there in the first place. So there was something wrong in the way you connected from the beginning. Body language of mirroring is really important. There's a lot of books on body language. You can look them up yourself. One of my favorites is What Everybody Is Saying. It's by a former FBI agent. What I look for in body language is mostly what we call baseline. So people have different body language baselines. For some people, they're always very excited, so you can't assume that the girl is excited just because she has exciting body language. Some people are low energy, but they could be excited at low energy. So you gotta find out what their baseline is. Then you look for what we call body language patterns. It doesn't mean that they're standoffish. It could just mean that they're cold and they're trying to preserve heat. But when you look at it as a cluster, are their feet pointing towards you? Is their bottom open? So we look for what we call patterns of clusters of body language to determine what that person might be thinking. And once you have a baseline, what every guy who's good with women does is he mirrors the girl. So the expressions, it's in tune. The way your body moves, your hand gestures, the way you're angled, the way you smile. So we call mirroring. People find that, not on, like deliberately like trying to fake it, but people that tend to mirror uh, our movements and our, our body language, our gaze tend to like us more. And so I start mirroring the girl. And at first it was very awkward because I'm trying to copy everything she's doing. And I realized mirroring is more about being comfortable and repeating some of the things that she does regularly to see if it works for you and to make her feel comfortable. So for example, if she's touching her face a lot, I'll touch my face a little bit. If she is um, smiling like a lot, moving her head, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I see. My version of moving my head is like I nod a lot. Yeah, I can see that happening, totally, right? So I'm mirroring whatever she's giving back and I'm pinging and pawing back and forth these honest signals. And that creates a strong level of attraction and rapport that you can't do with any other body language skill. The fifth honest signal is vibing of push and pull. There are lines to help you do this, right? But really you gotta feel it. You gotta go out there in the field and experience the truth. But basically it's like, I love you like my little sister. I can't tell if I, if I like you or if you're just a little bit annoying. Well, I guess we'll see. I'm slightly comfortable, but slightly aroused at the same time, right? Russell Brand uses this really, really well. Push and pull is natural. And in the prizing section, you'll learn a lot of push and pull lines. The best analogy I can give you is uh, from a dog named Zoe. Zoe was a little corgi that one of my roommates, she had. 
And I hated Zoe because I thought Zoe was a dumb dog and she didn't learn any tricks, she wasn't well behaved, and I thought she was stupid. One day uh, my roommate was gone and I was taking care of Zoe for the weekend. I, I kind of broke, right? I, I ignored her for a long time and then I, and as I was there with her alone, she, she still was very nice to me and we started playing and that was when my heart opened up to Zoe. But I learned a very important lesson that day, which is a dog doesn't take rejection personally. Dog is like there, little Zoe is like, hey, do you want to play? And I'm like, no. She's like, okay, well, I'll go play by myself. Or I'll find someone new. Hey, do you want to play? No. All right, that's cool. She's still happy all the time. So I realized the idea of push and pull in dating really is, hey, I'm a little puppy. Do you want to play? Okay, that's cool. Well, maybe we'll play later. Hey, do you want to play? So it's like you're not, I don't care what the result is. It's just the idea of like playfulness that animals ha naturally have that we humans, we seem to have lost as we become adults. When I was a little kid, I would go up to the first person. Do you want to be my friend? No. Next person. Do you want to be my friend? Do you want to be my friend? By the second or third person, whoever the little kid or little girl, little boy is, she'll be like, yeah, I'll be your friend. And that's how I met some of my best friends in kindergarten. It's a level of playfulness that the vibe of push and pull that creates this honest signal of like, it doesn't matter if you reject me, I'm just here to play. And that is super, super attractive. When you combine these five honest signals, the sub-communication of dominance that creates high level, high value attraction, the frame control of authenticity that brings it down to earth, down to the core, the realness of the conversation, the subtext of willingness to walk away. You're not a guy who's needy. You're just there you don't have to talk to her, but you kind of want to be there because you're enjoying yourself. The body language of mirroring that builds massive rapport and attraction once you have the baseline. The vibe of push and pull, the playfulness of it all. Those five honest signals create this draw of this guy who's dominant, fun, mysterious, but fun and down to earth and open. And when you say these lines that you learn in this course and you develop your own lines, these five honest signals are the foundation of how those lines are being said, the energy field, the subcommunication, the subtext, the mirroring, and the frame control to authentic conversation. That's what makes these lines so powerful. Without these five honest signals, you can say the line, but you may not get the result that you want because you're losing 70 to 80% of the real communication that's going on when it comes to flirting and dating, okay? Watch how these honest signals are being played out in all of my in-fields in that particular module. And as you practice these, I promise you, if you keep in mind these five honest signals, these lines will work for you because I have tested them with hundreds of clients at this point. And whenever the lines didn't work, it was because the client was missing one or more of these five honest signals. Every guy who is a player or who is a natural has these honest signals. If you don't believe me, look up uh, on YouTube Keys to the VIP and watch the episodes where the guys are naturals. All of them have these five honest signals. Go watch the top 10 romantic rom-coms or romantic dramas and watch the lead male actor. All of them have these five honest signals at some point in the movie. They sub-communicate dominance. They frame control for authentic conversation. They're always willing to walk away. They're not needy. They have body language that mirrors the female lead that creates this like comfortable it makes you want to watch the movie. And they all have the vibe of, of pushing and pulling and flirting. All of them have it. That's, why, that's one of the reasons why they're highest grossing because it looks good on film. And guess what? It feels good for the girl, okay? This is the most important lesson. Come back to this lesson. Every time you watch this lesson, it's gonna get deeper and deeper because there are different layers of understanding of these five honest signals. So come back to this one, bookmark it. I guarantee you, every time you finish a module, after every month of practicing, come back to this lesson, watch it again, and you're gonna develop deeper understandings of what honest signals really mean for you and how you can use it to improve your life. I hope this lesson was useful. I'll see you in the next one. If you want a simple and predictable system to attracting your type of dream girl, download your free guide at highintegrityskills33 or see the links in the description.